everybody. Uh, that's right, man. Welcome back to the Bow Fishing Buzz episode 83. My name is Matthew, and I'm here with my good buddy, D. Schmitty. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Woo! My favorite hour of the week, oh, starting my right goodness. now. I am jacked up, Schmitty. Yeah. Jacked up. Yep. But yep, first yep. of all, brought to you by AMS Bow Fishing and... Megamouth Bow Fishing as well. Bow Fishing Buzz, sponsored by End Designs and Efficiency Bow Fishing Lights by Outdoor Innovations USA. Yes, we are getting ready to kick off episode 83 yep. during the heart of the bow fishing season. Yeah. Yep. This is it. I am jacked up, Schmitty. Jacked why, up. Why are you jacked up, I'll man? tell you why in a little bit, but first, got some big news here, Schmitty. Yeah. Let's hear it. Let's big hear news it. here. The dates. Oh, yes. For next year's. AMS Bow Fishing Big 20 Challenge. Mm -hmm. Getting them out there early for everyone Getting to prepare for. That's right. Yep. May 17th and 18th. Perfect. Perfect. 2025. And this year, they were. it was 18th, 19th. Do I have correct. those dates? Correct. Yes, so we're, that's right, we're Schmitty. Same weekend. That is right, Schmitty. Same weekend. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There were mm -hmm. a lot of big fish brought in. A lot of guys came back to weigh-ins. Um, it's, it's a good time of year to get out and shoot some fish as well. It is. Yep. So that's uh, cool. Another reason that I really like to have it on those dates um, versus the June dates. And we might bounce back and forth, you know, yep, yep. May and June and stuff. But one of the reasons that I really like to get it out there, that middle part of May, is to get it out of the way. It opens up my schedule, your oh, schedule, sure. just so much better for traveling and yeah. filming and stuff like that. Yep. yep. Um, yep. So, yeah. Yep. Um, Schmitty. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> After the Big 20, you and I ventured over oh. to Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah, before we before we do this, Matt, there's one thing that um, uh -oh. that I have to do here, and I think that you actually might appreciate it. Okay, I'm looking at you right now. I'm viewing you through my ever so popular podcast goggles, uh, and that's all they're good for because they're not good for bow fishing. <laughs> Everybody listening, audio will not be able to witness what's happening right now, but something big is about to happen. Oh, he's removing his glasses and folding up. And he just tossed them off to the side. Wow, he just tossed his glasses off. The, uh oh, hold on here. Oh, oh, he's got some new glasses he's throwing on. Wow, polarized eye gogs. Remember our Fleet Farm special? The old Fleet Farm specials, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Fleet this weekend buying a sprayer for my tractor <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting to get checked out at the checkout and I look over there and just like a beacon screaming to me because Matt was always telling me how bad my glasses are. Yep. They're an expensive pair of sunglasses, but they are not that good on the water. No, they absolutely suck. <laughs> you, you gave me you gave me your $15 pair when we were out last week compared to what I had on. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, come on. These are so much better. Yeah. So I went to Fleet this weekend. I, I bought them. You even got the Fannie Mae uh, uh, tag on there yet? Oh, yeah, absolutely. These are brand nice. new. Brand, brand spanking. spanking new. Yep. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there looking at them <laughs> and I'm trying all these glasses on. You know, they got that little mirror there for you to put them on. Yeah. So I'm putting on a bunch of glasses. This random guy comes up and, you know, they've got them on that big rack where you can spin them and there's, you know, there's a hundred pair on this one yeah. rack. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there looking at All of a sudden, a guy comes over, spins the rack. As I'm looking, looking at myself, it. I'm like, what, <laughs> what are we doing here? And he goes like this. These were hung up there. He goes like this with his hand. He goes, those. And I'm like, whoa. And then he just vanished oh. into thin air. Boom, he's gone. Was he a bow fishing like? I don't know. Or something? I don't know. He's pushing his card around. He just comes over and he taps on these. He goes, these. So I like them, Schmitty, because you got the amber lenses. I know. And they're polarized. I'm like, yeah. well, how can I go against this random dude yeah. in Fleet Farm? He probably knows what he's talking about. That's so right. now I'm rolling with these babies. <laughs> I love so. amber polarized lenses. Yeah. For, so I'm on, a, I'm on that kick, too, just after seeing you know how nice. well yours use. Nice. So, yeah, we got some new polarized glasses in there. That a boy, Schmitty. Way to get rid of those other ones. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you were saying, Matt, last week we were doing something, huh? Yeah. You and I, uh, we went over to Green Bay. Oh, yes. Yes, we did. Um, um, after we went over there a couple times. Yep. Yep. Um, but we went over there expecting to see a little more of the bigger females in Schmitty. Yeah, we and were. it just, because that was uh, June 2nd. Yeah, that was last week, Sunday. Not not yesterday, right. but the week, eight days ago, yes. Sunday. Yep. yep. And yep. we were, just from what you were telling me and things that you had heard from people, we kind of right. went down there with high expectations. We did. We, we were did. we were excited. That could be yep. fun. Yep. Um, and, and there was fish spawning. Bad. Yeah, it no. wasn't bad. Yeah. It was, there were fish to be shot. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of playing that selective harvest game, kind of. Kind of like quality carp control. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Whatever we, when we were talking quality to the camera, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. QCM, <laughs> quality carp management. Yeah. Um, and there were fish to be shot. Don't get me wrong, but it seemed like there was just a lack of those 
really big tanks that we were thinking right. we were going to run into right. down there. And we bounced all over. We did. We, we were, were everywhere. We flew all over the place. Yep. We flew all over the place and just couldn't find them. But um, at the end of the day... I was going to say, that That being said, yeah. Um, we were kind of wrapping up. We were actually, you know, 20 minutes beforehand, you just kind of made the statement of, well, let's let's work down this bank here. Let's go down here and head back to the boat ramp. Yep. Yep. So we went to this little area where there was a bunch of grass kind of laid over, and there was a lot of males just up Lane. sunning themselves right. Right. up on the surface of the water. It was very cool to go through there. I mean, in any glance, you could probably see five or six fish up on the surface of the water. And, um, you know, we were shooting a couple of fish. I was up on the filming platform actually filming. Yep. Kind of calling them out because you can see so much. Even though right. I'm, you know, from when I'm sitting and you're up on the catwalk, I'm only maybe two or three feet higher than you. Makes all the difference oh, in the world. Huge. It's crazy. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and right in front of you, all of a sudden you said, oh, there's a big fish right there. So I hit, I hit record on the camera and I looked through the viewfinder and I'm like, oh my God, that fish looks huge. Yep. And it was sitting vertical. Yeah. It was kind of, it was, yeah, it wasn't like and all the other fish like that were in from there. Just behind the gill plate up to its mouth was visible. Yeah. It was yep. kind of sitting there. Yep. Yep. In, in a bunch of reed grass, cattail grass mm-hmm. and stuff. And I was, I was rolling slow-mo. Right, right over your shoulder. The right. shot is actually really it cool. It is really the, cool. The shot. And you, you smoked her. Yeah. And um, I'll be honest with you, Matt. I thought it was a good fish. Right. But then you brought that fish. You know, you shot the fish. At, the fish dove. You know, you're fighting it in, bring it in, yep. whatever. And you get it both sides. And I'm filming. So I don't want to say anything out loud to, you know, interrupt the filming process. But in my head, I'm like, oh, my God. That <laughs> fish is that fish is way bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, me too. And it ended up weighing 38.1. Yeah. I mean, that's a tank of a common car. It was so thick. And yes. Just solid. Yep. You know, yep. it was a solid carp. Yeah. yeah pretty yeah. cool way to end the end that trip on. Absolutely. Yeah, that was really cool. And something else, too, that I thought about that fish, Matt. You know, a lot of times when we get fish in a boat or whatever, you, know, you shoot a 15-pound male. Yep. And you get them in the boat. And sometimes they'll, you know, you'll get them into the barrel. And they're just flopping like crazy. They're going nuts. Yep. When you shoot fish of that size, when you bring a 38-pound right. tank in the boat, right. their body weight is so much to them that they can't. They can't do that. You'll just see a, a tail flap. You know, they don't have that same amount of... Right. You think putting a big fish in a barrel, oh my God, she's going to make all kinds of noise and spook these fish. She just acts like they an know. anchor. Right. And she just <laughs> weights everybody else down. Yep. That was kind of an interesting right. thing I noticed about that big one. Another layout. cool part of that day, Schmidt, is we went to a different area, uh, really shallow, oh, yeah. right off the main part of the of Lake of Green Bay. Yeah. Yep. Before it comes back into some sloughs on the west side over yep. there. Yep. And... Uh, it was windy and the waves were coming in there, but then we got be- behind a little island and stuff, mm-hmm. and, and we got behind some in some reed grass and stuff. Yeah, and boy, were they spawning so just hard crazy. in there. Yeah, nothing, nothing big on size. Right, but man, it was just so cool. We were getting a lot of slow mo shots over the shoulders and oh, just yeah. watching them swim around in the grass and everything. Yep. And I do have to apologize, oh, because since uh, we have taken Tim Wells out and he was on our podcast and everything, yeah. I have not had time to put these video podcasts together. Just oh been- yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, we're slamming here. So I, mean, I apologize that the video podcast are out there. We did have, I did make a video podcast on our last one with the, the bow fishing or the big 20 yep. recap. Yep. Um, so I apologize that we're not getting a lot of this cool footage out there, but I just have not had time. Yeah. I just haven't had time yeah. to yeah. sit down and put these together. And you're out tomorrow now too. You're leaving. Yeah. So we can, we yeah. can go into more into that, what you're doing tomorrow, but right. Um, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then Shmitty on June uh, 4th, I was back over on Green Bay again. Yeah. Um, I took a sales rep out and also a buyer Yeah, uh, for a store, yep. an outdoor store. We took them out uh, to get him on the water and get him used to the bow fishing oh, gear absolutely. and equipment that we all make here at AMS and yeah. Mega Mouth. Yep. And um, <laughs> Schmitty. <laughs> Schmitty, uh, Schmitty, know, Schmitty, Schmitty. Here's a problem, Matt. If it's not on camera, I don't know if I can believe it. That's, oh. I just, did anyone else in the boat see it? Yes. Oh, they did. Okay. All um, right. So you've got some witnesses the there. Guy, the guy from the store saw it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. John Volkman did not see it. Oh. Yeah, he was down doing something else in the boat. Okay. But, uh, okay. Why don't you tell everybody what you saw? Oh, my gosh. So I found some fish for, for them to see and to shoot at and stuff like that there. And the same thing as when you and I were there, they were kind of just sitting up on the surface, just yeah. chilling out, coming out of the cattails, just cruising around. Not yep. a lot of fish, but they were doing that. And, um, of course, I have him on the in the good spot, in a good shooting yep. spot. So in the he's hot on corner. A, he's on the hot corner, and yep. I'm off on the left side, just trolling on the edge of the cattails and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, all of a sudden, here's this nice common just swimming slowly in front of us, out there about 10 yards. Mm-hmm. And I said, right there, right there. You know, he draws back the little ringo, and, and he smokes it. 
I mean, he made a awesome. heck of a shot. His yep. first shot of the, on the day. Oh, it was his first shot? It was shot. his first oh, shot. Oh, really? Wow. And he smokes it and it goes out. And we chase, I didn't want him to lose it, so I chased him down a little yep. bit. I put it back up into it. We get in the boat. It was a nice, you know, 20 some pound cut. Nice. Yeah, solid and, fish. Uh, actually, John Volkman got it all on film, so it's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Cool. With his, with his camera there. And then uh, we kept going and, and shooting at some fish here and there. And, and uh, we're coming around the cattails, and I look in front of us on the edge of the cattails there, and I thought, well, that fish is bright. <laughs> you know, I thought that, mm -hmm. it was further. It was about 20 yards away when I saw it, but I'm like, that, that fish is bright. So let me let me dive into your, your thought process here, Matt. When you first see it, you look over and you see this bright colored fish. Yep. What kind of species did you think it was? What kind of species of fish did you think it was? It was? A, I figured it was a carp because okay. it was swimming away from me. Okay. And I could see its tail. Okay. And I could see the, you know, the, the shape of a carp. Sure. How they go up yep. like that there. Yep. And it turned and it went into the cattails. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I didn't say nothing to anybody, but I was like, boy, that looked like it was awfully bright. Okay. To me. And so you, you didn't say a peep to anybody. I didn't anybody. say a peep to anybody. Okay. Okay. So I'm just, Barely, we're just barely crawling around in the trolling motor on yeah. the edge there. All of a sudden, I see it come oh. out vertically to us. It's a gold car. Oh. 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 It was so bright. <laughs> really? And it's over on the guy's hot shot oh. side. So is, is he set up and ready to shoot, or is he still messing I, around I with yell, the fish says, shot? Gold carp, gold carp. And he's looking around, and, and I would have been, I didn't want to... You know, I didn't you want didn't to, want to shoot in his area. In that his he, area, yep, right? Yep. But and it, it came out of the cattails and it just started sinking into the grass. And I'm like, we're gonna get right over top of this fish and yeah. see it, no problem. Yeah, if and especially if it's orange and gold. Oh, it colored. was so bright. It was just beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it was so bright. You could see the scales and everything on it. So I just ease over top of it and I'm looking down. It was gone. Oh. It was totally gone. Like a ghost. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that's tough i was i thought about that the whole day i was just sick to my stomach yeah. i had a, ch ch a chance at my first ever gold carp that right. i ever saw bow right. fishing and that was it and the buyer and the rep probably didn't understand the rarity of that maybe maybe they did i don't know if, if they don't shoot as much maybe they don't understand like oh my god that's something he did that tell me he said get over here and take a shot at it you know um, but I just stayed where I was. I sure. just thought we would drift over top of it and see it just laying down there because it right. was so bright, but it was gone. Mm, my goodness. Gone. That's crazy. So do you think oh. it was like that that same type of color scheme as that one that Brandon Cole shot? Same thing. Same deal. Yep. Okay. Same and thing. that was a very orange yes. colored. I know when you initially yeah. told me the story, you said it looked like a Wisconsin rifle hunter coming out of yeah. the cattails right. in bright orange. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Hmm, that's crazy. That's That's really cool to see that, honestly. And, you know, moving on here, Matt, you are leaving us tomorrow yeah what are you yep. what are you yep. leaving us for where are you going and for what purpose oh, oh, oh. this schmitty is my favorite time of year um i love this trip i'm heading down to kentucky for the jared ashmore youth oh, tournament that's awesome that's cool and uh it's, it's i just love this event um it's a little sad this year though oh, i have no. to admit it's a little sad okay um i've been taking uh Cody love it out since he was seven years old. Yep. Yep. This is his last year. Oh, that makes me feel old. Oh. This is his last year. And how old is he now? 17. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, it, it just, just to see the progress in throughout all these years of going down there and having him in the boat, having him shoot sure. fish. Now, when I go down there, if Dennis is busy with, with his guiding trips and stuff, he doesn't have time to go out with me or do anything with me. Cody comes over. He's back in the boat, and he's going up and getting the trailer, breaking it down for me. We're, him and I are going out. We're shooting fish. We're filming and stuff. Sure. And uh, just to see that progress. Oh, yeah. Years, I mean, before he would fall asleep in the boat, had he met to the boat landing after the Jared Ashmore. Sure. He'd sleep on the way to the boat landing and yep. stuff. And, and just seeing that, that young little kid, you know, into a teenager now. Yeah. And he's a hell of a shot, too. Oh, he's a great I mean, he's shot. A killer. He's a great kid. Yeah. And uh, we take out his, his sister now also. We took her out for the first time last year. Oh, that's cool. Her smile and her laugh is just contagious oh it's just unbelievable sure. yes and she's yeah. got that little tiny southern accent oh sure it's uh, yep. dennis redden's granddaughter gotcha and we'll probably be taking out his other granddaughter as well and i'm not sure about ty redden um ty is extremely busy in his bass yeah he's catching bass he's, all over the place yes he's all over the place and, yeah. and everything so yeah it's uh he, he's really busy doing that traveling all over the place yeah. um in fact dennis is just getting back uh he took uh ty up to 
Canada. Oh, that's and they right. They were bear hunting. Yeah. They, they just got back, I think, last night from yep. that trip. Uh, yep. They each shot bear with their bow and arrow. And I think, if I read the post right, I think, did they each tag out on the same day? Uh, that I didn't, I don't know yet. I thought I saw a picture of them, and, and the uh, caption, Dennis said, not very often that you get to tag out on bears with your grandson on the same day. Right, or something, right. something like that, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. So mm-hmm. for this tournament, Matt, are you going to be taking out, how many kids are you going to have in the boat then? Probably four. Oh, you're going to have four total. Okay, yep. gotcha. Four, three or four. So yep. let me let me ask you about the uh, the tournament aspect of this. I remember yes. when I went down with you a couple times, it was like a one o'clock cutoff, one a.m. was when you had to be back, or it was some kind you of had to early. Be back. I think you had to be back at two a.m. or two a.m. Like that. Okay, yeah. and then it, is it like is it like five fish you weigh in per kid? Each kid weighs in five fish. Gotcha. Yes. Of mm. any any variety, any species, and then the biggest weight wins for each age each class. Each age class, right? Gotcha. There's three age classes, okay. and then you also have. Female and male top shooters and yep. stuff like that. There and yep. Andy Cardwell and his crew have been been doing this for years, and That's it's awesome. just a wonderful event. Yep. It's a great event. Every kid walks with a prize. Mm-hmm. Um, tons of volunteers that help out because the guys that are doing the wings and stuff, these kids are flopping those fish and in barrels, and they're holding up the barrels by the boats there. And oh, sure, slime and oh, everything, yeah. and splatter and and everything's just coming down on them. So yeah. it's a yeah. really really neat neat deal. Sure. Um, just absolutely love this trip, and. Uh, from what I've heard, Schmitty, okay, that uh, last weekend was Worlds down there. Yes, it was. Battle in the Bluegrass, and baby. We're, we're going to talk about that later on. Okay. Um, but word on the street is that the conditions are getting just right because for the Worlds, the water was all jacked up. They had say, a ton of rain. Yeah. Uh, the gates were all open. It was just dirty water. The fish just weren't up. They were way back you know, in. Uh, I heard the, the night of the tournament or the day of the tournament, the water was dropping, which absolutely oh, that's sucks. tough. Yeah, for shooting fish because as soon as those water feel that pressure of that water pulling back, they just they yeah. head to deep water. Yep, and yep. it was just really rough down there. But from what I've heard, is uh, there was a absolute giant big head shot down in that area here within the last couple of days. Oh, really? Yes. Not not a, now. You're not talking about big heads from Worlds last week. No, you're talking in the last couple of days. Yes. Oh my, are we yes. going to talk about that later on the podcast? Um, I got the message sent to me, and it <laughs> okay. said. Uh, don't say nothing. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. Well, that's exciting. But what I will oh, say now is... The, the numbers are just going in my He head. showed me a picture of the scale with the lips going through the scale. Oh! What to know? Hold on here. We've got somebody calling us oh, here on the, the Bow Fishing Buzz Hotline. Oh, I bet who you know who it is. Who could this be, Oh, boy. Is it Cranky? Hey, this is the Bow Fishing Buzz. Who do we have calling in right now? Oh, hold Uh-oh. on here. Hold. Let's try that again here. Uh oh. Hold on. Who we got calling on the bullfishing buzz here? Who is this? Oh man. Oh. oh. <laughs> we got cranky. Everybody. I know that. I know that voice. Cranky's joining us again. Oh. <laughs> What's going on, Cranky? Oh, I wonder if he's too far underwater. He can't get a good. Oh, signal maybe here. that is what it is. Is Cranky can there? You hear me, Matt? Oh, oh, hey, hey, Cranky, we can hear you now. It must be down the lily pads too deep. You got to move up, up a little bit. Yeah, swim up to the surface. I, I, I'm putting down a new carpet. I, I felt carpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. What what color is your carpet? <laughs> Tan. Tan. Tan <laughs> like Beverly's lips were. Oh, oh. Beverly. Still hung up on Beverly. Still hung up oh, on Beverly. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, that's I too gotta bad. I got to tell you, Matt. Smitty. I'm not too happy about the Beverly. I finally got back on Fender. Swipe <laughs> right, found Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Okay, cool. You're moving on. Nice. Yeah, I was moving on. Oh, no. Started swimming around. Started to get a little feelings for her. There she goes, towards the light. Oh, oh out boy. Out of my life. Oh. I even went and got a new pair of fins, too. Got these carp airs. They're oh, like the Nike nice. airs. For us. The new fins. I was staying with her the whole night. And then I heard the troller. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Gone. Gone Jessica's... like that. Jessica's gone for oh, the life. But that's no. okay. I always tell you, though, I got back on Tinder. Oh. Swiped right. There there was this picture of this gorgeous carp. Never gave me her name. Said she just wanted to meet up. I got there. I got catfish. It was a perch. Green oh. around the snow. <laughs> I was so upset. Now <laughs> I just figured I'd just stay home, lay down some carpet, and just stay here and wait for next summer. Wow! Next spring, I rather next spring when the spawn comes back, then I just cranky will come 
Cranky will come up from the bottom and be happy again. There yeah, you go. You, you know, you, Cranky, yep. you you actually this could be. You're very lucky that you know it's terrible that your your ladies are getting taken out of your life, but you're lucky that you're not. You haven't been brought up to the light by those crazy crazy guys with bows and arrows. You guys will never get me too slick. Oh, I was swimming around. <laughs> I was swimming around Green Bay the other day. Oh. Found a pair of sunglasses on the bottom. Real? In the shallow water. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, put them on now. I can see you guys coming a mile oh, away. Oh, my gosh. Oh, cranky. No. Cranky. Um, those weren't by chance a pair of vicious vision uh, polarized glasses, were amber, they? Amber. Amber lenses. Oh, they had amber no. lenses. In them. They had a weird looking logo with like a fish or something on the side. Yep. That's. Oh, um, no. I, uh, cranky. I, I did fall in the water a, a couple weeks ago on Green Bay, cranky. I did oh fall in. Oh, my gosh. What are the odds? And I did lose my glasses, so you have my vicious vision, vision uh, glasses. We got to go on, cranky. We gotta yeah, go I got your go glasses, down. Matt. You send me your address, <laughs> and I'll just think about sending you my, my new glasses. I'm serious. <laughs> I can see the Minn Kota's. I look up, I see the Minn Kota's coming a mile away. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's, it's working in reverse now. The fish can see us coming. This is terrible. Wow. Well, well, Cranky, you do know that we were down there in Green Bay a couple weeks ago, actually on June 2nd, Cranky, and we did shoot a 38-pound common. I don't know if that was Jessica or not. Oh, no. That was her, Matt. Oh. That was her. Oh. She had a bigger fin on the right than the left. So that, was <laughs> just... that was her. That was her. Oh, no. Wow, Cranky. I'm sorry, Cranky. I'll tell you what, Matt, you're never getting your glasses back now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's good you stuff. You keep right shooting there. my ladies, Matt. Yep. Not so. And see, I, I really... I catch my perp, though, that catfished me. Yeah. He was an ugly thing. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Cranky, I, I have to say, you were giving us some tips uh, last time you were on the podcast about the worlds down there, and... uh you made a prediction that the big heads were, were going to be, you know, down deep. They were going to be down deep. And, and uh, what, what what went on with that, Cranky? Because they shot some giant big heads down there. Yes, they did. The top two placing teams. Well, I got to tell you, Matt, old Lance. Me and Lance have a pretty good thing going. That's all I'm going to say, Matt. <laughs> you know what I mean, Matt? Oh. He lays off me, and I give him a little bit of information, maybe steer the rest of you guys. The all wrong way. Oh, <laughs> wow. I see. So We're being double crossed here. So you're in cahoots with Lance Brantley yes, from cahoots. Team On Tracks, huh? Is riddled in cahoots. I here. like that guy. You know what I mean? He stays messing with those big, big heads. He leaves yeah. us commons alone. Ah. I like guys like that. You tell the listeners they find cranky. I'll let them know where the big heads are. Ah, I'm gonna see. be. Wait, I'm gonna that, be. I'm going to be calling Matt. you here, Cranky. I'm going to call you here, Cranky, on my way down, because I'm heading down to Kentucky, and I'm going to go chase one of them giant big heads. So yeah, gonna... Matt, but I ain't helping you. You keep shooting. You shot Beverly, and you shot Tesla. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is right. Yep. I did forget about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a big now, deal. Now, I've got some kids on the boat, Matt. You know what? I might help you out a little bit, because oh. I don't get along so much with those big heads, but uh, I hear the weather's going to be good, so I think the fish yeah. are going to be up. I'll yeah. have to. I'll have to text my friends down there and find out what's going on. You know okay. what I mean? But yeah. The, the yep. weather's going to be nice. Get those kids out in the water. There's nothing I like more than looking up at the up at the surface and seeing a bunch of youngsters on them boats. One thing <laughs> for sure, half the time they can't hit us. But they throw a lot of arrows at us. That's right. That's right. It's a great time, Cranky. You got any, any tips for, like, are the silvers going to be up, you think, for the kids? Absolutely. Them silvers are dumb as a day's long. Oh. Those things are up no matter what the weather's like, no matter what the wind's like. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And the gar. The okay. gar are always up. The gar are always up. Go to the point. You'll find the gar. All right. All right. What about what about grassies? Uh, you, you said that the grasses are going to be up really good, but there wasn't a lot of grassies uh, down there in Worlds that I no. saw. I, I know the water was dropping down there, cranking. That had something to do with it, but you think the, the grassies are going to be back up a little bit better? Got to be honest, Matt. My connection's dead. Gary, gone. Oh. Somebody shot him. He was like a 30-pounder. Gone. Oh, oh, man. I think that wasn't that like one of the heaviest ones that was shot down there was a 30-pound grass or something like that? Oh, no, Gary. Yeah, he was dieting. Small guy. But you know what? They got him. That's all that matters. But I'm That's a little right. upset because Gary was one of my good buddies. Oh, oh Gary, man. 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 You must go through friends like, uh, yeah. you know, like uh, just going through like hotcakes and stuff like yeah. that. You guys are getting too good. You're fish-tastic shot. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, Gary. And that's not a fictitious rumor either. 
I'm full. Of, oh boy, he's just he's just all kinds he's all of full of he's cranky, full of puns pulling here. them out left and right here. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Well, you cr- just tell those kids to shoot straight because any fin is possible. <laughs> any fin is possible. This guy, I tell you, he's what, on a roll. He is on, he's a, on roll. a roll. Holy moly, <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, you know, Matt, if things been rough down here. I had to go see a loan shark the other day for some sand dollars. You know why, Matt? Oh, no, why does that get cranky? One of my minnows is going to college. Oh, your minnow is yep. going to college. Yes, he's going to be a surgeon. He's oh. going to be a surgeon. Wow. Wow, one of your little minnows. a lot of money these days to be a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's expensive. He'll make lots of sand dollars, Matt. He's going to make lots of sand dollars. Oh, and you oh, know what's boy. cool? You guys can't mess with the surgeon. <laughs> That's, that's true. That's right. They're off yep. limits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Smart mm-hmm. kid. Smart yep. kid. Yep. Yeah. He's per- got his pop looks and his mama's little Beverly on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Beverly. Beverly's eyes. We yeah. must have spawned that. Must have spawned. <laughs> must have spawned a couple years back and you didn't even yeah. really realize it, yeah. huh? Only oh, just a little guy. Yeah. But he knows he wants to be a surgeon, man. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Little hillbillyism going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hillbillyism. We're car packing. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, Cranky, you well, got like it. The bath. You know what I mean? The bath got it made. They just lay there. Big old whopper popper comes floating around the top and whoop, they go up. The guy gives them a big fat kiss and throws them back. That's true. You yeah. guys shoot it. Put a big graping hole on the side of it. Pull us up. Throw us in a pit. That's all you do. It's a a rough life, isn't it, Cranky, to be a carp? It's real rough. But I'm going to lay here in this bottom for a few few months and just chill out, keep my eye on things. You know, I'm part of that CSI we talked about. Yep. And uh, I'd just like to let you know what's going on. I think you guys are going to do good at that Jared Ashmore. Yep. When is it the Jared Ashmore there in Kentucky? Mm -hmm. You guys are going to do good. Oh, I I got the latest Carpify information, Matt. You passed Joe Rogan. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is huge. Wow. <laughs> you think the word for it. Joe called me twice. You can offer me what you offer me. I told Joe to pound sand. Literally, pound sand. <laughs> I'm with Matt and Schmitty on the Bow Fishing Podcast. Well, that is awesome bird. to hear. I love to hear We're that. number one on Carpify. Yeah. How That's cool amazing. Is that? how That's cool amazing. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. Well, Cranky, we'll let you get back to your carpet down there and and doing some interior decorating. It sounds like you're doing down there. So we'll let you get back to work there, and uh, we appreciate you calling in to us here, Cranky. I'm enjoying these glasses, Matt. Sure can see a lot. (laughs) Right now there's a big old pike over there. Yep, that's a nice pike. He's about 40 inches, Matt, and he's about to get completely. Nope, he didn't get it. The Whopper Popper went right on by on us. Talk about these Whopper Poppers you guys like to throw. When you're going fishing. But anyway, Matt, I got to go. Mom's calling, and I got to get this carpet laid all the way across the bottom of the sandbar before before dark. All right. Well, good luck, Cranky, with that, and uh, stay safe, buddy. Hey, I ain't got to stay safe. You guys ain't going to never get me. You, Matt, stay safe. Stay safe driving, and you tell those kids to stay safe this weekend. Make we'll- sure they're wearing their life jackets and have fun, swing a lot of arrows, and lay off the common carp, please. <laughs> All right, we'll do that, Cranky, here this week. Thanks for calling, buddy. Thanks, Cranky. Bye, Smitty. Bye, Matt. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, he must have the prep time that he must put in to have all these fish puns, all these carp puns. is truly amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. What a guy. What yeah. a guy you, Cranky is calling yeah. us here in the bullfishing buzz. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> so. so we were saying about <sighs> the scale. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Before yep. Cranky called in. Yep. So this... From right at the scale was reading, it was reading over 100 pounds. Oh, my God. Just going to leave it at that right now. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to know so much more. <laughs> Holy moly. Triple digits. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Wow. Um, Schmitty, before we move on to the uh, talking about the, the worlds and stuff like that there, I do have to brag up a little bit about the uh, a couple of AMS pro staff teams that uh, finished first and second oh, down God, at the yeah. worlds. We got some the bragging 20. to do here, brother. Woo. 
That was cool. Yeah, absolutely. First and second place in, at Worlds. That's, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I think we're going to get into some numbers a little bit later on here. Yep, we'll get into some of that later on. But yeah, AMS mm-hmm. Staffers first and second place in the Battle of Bluegrass this year. That is absolutely spectacular. Absolutely. Um, Matt, now it is time for... Did you feel the tension in the air right now? It's time for B A A Records. All righty, B A Records here kicking it off here. Congrats to Kyle Miller on his B A A Michigan State Records Smallmouth Buffalo, weighing thirty one point five pounds. Nice shooting to Kyle. That's right. Uh, next, we've got Luke Chalk on his B A A Michigan State Record Big Mouth Buffalo, weighing twenty six point two zero pounds. Mike Burgess on his B A A Michigan State Record Brown Bullhead, weighing in at one point five pounds. Nice shooting, Mike. Well, they ain't messing around over in Michigan. No, they're not. Boom, Good boom, board. boom. Three yeah. of them right in a row. Uh, Joshua McCormick on his B A A Kansas State Record Mere Carp, weighing in at eleven point nine zero pounds. Cool. Congrats to Nathan Dale on his B A A Minnesota State Record Goldfish. You always give me you always give me the goldfish to make me more jealous. Um, but congrats to Nathan, uh, BAA Minnesota State Record goldfish weighing two point two pounds. Nice shooting to Nathan. Next, we've got Tyler Epperson on his BAA Georgia State Record goldfish well. weighing in at three point four zero pounds. Nice shooting, Tyler. <laughs> congrats to Scott Hall, BAA South Dakota State Record quillback carp sucker weighing eight pounds even. And we got Patrick Conway on his BAA California State and World Record Bat Ray. Oh. Weighing in at oh, 107.30 pounds. Good Lord. What a tank. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yep. Um, before we move on here to the BAA wrap up here, Schmitty. Okay. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff about uh, the, the, people are getting ready to put in bids now for where they want their worlds to be next year. Okay. Okay, yep. Yep. so there's a lot of talk on that. Uh, actually, Wisconsin is up there. People, Wisconsin is one of the spots. I've heard that. You yep. know that people are saying a lot about. Yep. Um, but one of the uh, some of the stuff that I see people commenting on is they like to see it go back to shotgun starts and one lake on one lake only and stuff like that, mm. um, like it used to be years ago. But um, I, I I don't see that happening anymore. I think bow fishing has changed so much. Yeah, it's becoming so much more popular. Um, people know about bow fishing, that there's a lot more teams. Um, it's just more popular. And like, for example, here in Wisconsin, you know, we get 80 to, you know, a hundred teams in the tournament. Yep. Um, we can't have all those boats on one lake. No, no, because we don't have large enough lakes for that. Nope. Uh, the DNR will not let us do that. Right. Right. Um, I don't think it would be enjoyable as a participant. That's that's the thing, Schmitty, is there's not 80 good spots no. on a lot of bodies of water, even if they're very large bodies of water. And think of the ground guys are covering now, too. I mean, right. you're, you're gonna be, it's going to be bumper boat central out there. Yep, yep. Um, I was in a couple shotgun start tournaments years ago. Um, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty Everybody crazy. Everybody taking off at the same yep, time. Yep, everybody taking off at the same time. Uh, it was pretty neat. Um but as a tournament director, I'm just speaking on myself of what I think. I, I want teams to be as far away from each other as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want teams to come back the next day and have arguments right. on the water, right. uh, disputes on the water, yep. confrontations yep. on the water, confrontations which, back at the weigh-ins. Which are going to happen when you've got everybody packed in tight together. right. right. And don't get me wrong, I understand it. You, you like to see teams competing on the same body of water. You'd like to see that, but I don't think these bodies of water are big enough for the no. these larger tournaments. Right um, now, can you do that? Yeah, the, the, like here the Wisconsin Bow Fishing Association, we have tournaments on specific bodies of water. Right, um, you don't have eighty boats taken off right. at the same time, and I I don't think that it's a different style of bow fishing nowadays. Is what I, I've been seeing a little bit. I think it's just the way bow fishing has evolved. Mm-hmm. Um, people like to go out and and be by themselves mm-hmm. on a body of water. Uh, they don't want to have another boat come within 20 yards of them, driving around them, driving in front of them. I had that happen a lot of times. Right. You know? Um, so shotgun starts were were cool. They were fun back then. A um, little crazy at the beginning there, taking off and oh, heading down rivers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually saw a boat bounce off of a, of a 
channel marker one oh my gosh on the illinois river really yeah. wow yeah and there is barges coming up the river and stuff oh, so see, all was, that is that's yeah. bad stuff could happen yeah. with yeah. that combination of things mm-hmm. happening all at once with all the people yep and another thing is too uh we looked at this when we were having our first tournament in brandenburg uh they had a, a very nice large uh boat landing area down there but can you imagine cramming in 85 boats at a boat mm-hmm. landing yeah and then um also having the general public trying to get oh, in and out of gosh. there. Oh, God, the God forbid a pontoon somehow gets its way in the middle of all right. these guys who are right. racing to get out. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I was actually, uh, my dad and I were fishing on the Mississippi River last year, and uh, there was a, a a college bass tournament going on out of that same boat landing. Okay. Derek, we came in, and we could not get off the boat landing for an hour and a half. Oh, my gosh, really? Yeah, it was pathetic. Yeah. I bet. It was terrible. These guys were taking so long to load their bass. Really? Boats. I'm like, come on, my God. And we were parked in. We were, we're not, we weren't even able to get our truck out and oh, get it in the line. Sure. Yeah. We were parked in. Um, oh. You would have that type of, you know, stuff going on and everything. Um, so I think the, the bow fishing tournaments have evolved so much to where you see them as, you know, statewide tournaments um, or, or several lakes included in the tournaments you know, that you are able to shoot. Right. Uh, like, for example, a couple of years ago, when it was out in South Dakota. Um, Lance and, and uh, Rich Porter had several lakes that were open to the tournament, and people were wanting more. Yeah. They were wanting more lakes right. opened up. Right. Um, it's just the way that it has, has evolved. And like I said, yeah, you can have shotgun starts for your smaller state tournaments and stuff like that, but I just don't think you can have that for these your larger tournaments. Well, and let's just, let's just break it down to, you said you and your dad were out fishing on the Mississippi River. All right. Yeah. You guys had to wait an hour and a half to get to be able to put the boat back on the right. trailer. Yeah. All right. Um, now, if you and your dad were planning to go fishing this upcoming weekend, you're all excited to go do that. Well, here you look on the schedule. Here, there's another bass tournament right. down there. Guess what? You're not going to do I'm go down there to I'm go fishing, to or, or at least to that boat landing. Right. You don't want that to happen to right. people who are wanting the general public that these boat landings are are just as much for as a, a tournament would be. You don't want to yeah. have that negative aspect right. shining down on a bow fishing tournament. Yep. You know, you don't want people around there going, well, I'm not going to go on the water this weekend because there's right. going to be boats everywhere. And and more than likely, the general public is not going to be knowing that there's going to be a tournament right. going on because they're not following bow right. fishing. Yeah, they're know? not in the community. Right. So when they get there, they're going to be like, holy cow, well, yeah. what's going on here? This right. is wow. Right. And they might, some might like it, but if they're trying to put their pontoon in or something like that there. Oh, and, yeah. And, um, there's areas too, you know, like for example, a lot of teams might put their boat in early, but you can't do that in a lot of spots. Can you imagine 80 boats trying to sit there down on the Ohio River? I, right. We're, we're, we're going to bounce on the rocks yeah. down there, yeah. you know, because there's no docks, you know, down there at right. all. Yep. But yeah, it, it's just the way that things are evolving though. So I don't, I don't think you'll see a lot of those shotgun starts and one lake tournaments because you're going to have confrontations. You're going to have, you know, and to get, like I said, to get, um, be allowed to have tournaments on certain bodies of water. You have to fill out paperwork yeah, for right. that ahead of time. Yep. And then they have to get approved by the DNR. Yep. Like especially here in Wisconsin, you have to do that. And no way would they allow us to have 80 boats on, say, Pete and Well flowage. Right. It'd be a disaster. Yeah. Yep. It'd be a big disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good insight, Matt. Yep. Um, but uh, we'll move on to the uh, BEA Worlds right after this commercial from our sponsors. Sounds good. Efficiency Bow Fishing Lights by Outdoor Innovations USA. A color tone adjustable and dimmable light with a unique patented reflector design that puts more light where you need it. Efficiency Bowfishing Lights offer three different models. The 65 watt single color economy light, the 65 watt efficiency V2 tricolor dimmable light for maximum efficiency and versatility, and the 130 watt efficiency maximus, designed to be an all out beast of a bowfishing light. Efficiency, designed and built by bowfishermen for bowfishermen. Check them out at OutdoorInnovationsUSA.com. Are you looking to elevate your bowfishing brand with stunning design solutions? Look no further than End Designs. Their team of talented designers is dedicated to bringing your vision to life. Whether it's t-shirts, hats, leather products, eye-catching logos, to captivating boat wraps, they have you covered. Plus, with their commitment to excellence and attention to detail, you can trust that your project is in good hands. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose End Designs for extraordinary results. Visit their website today and let's bring your ideas to life. End Designs, where creativity meets excellence. 
And welcome back, everybody. Episode 83 of the Bullfishing Buzz. Um, We're going to dive into the BAA World Wrap-Up from last weekend. Yep. And to kick it off here, Matt, let's start with the numbers portion of that tournament. All right. So um, coming in first place down there at the the numbers tournament at the Worlds, uh, team born to kill. Team captain Zachary Karate shooting 683 fish, winning $10,000. $10,000. Wow, nice job. Nice, nice shooting. Job. Team born to kill. Mm-hmm. Coming in second was Team 2X4, Captain Deuce Cox, shooting 551 fish, winning $5,000. Awesome. Third place in numbers, Team Wrong Hole. Mm. Captain Mike Lunn, shooting 512 fish, winning $3,000. Nice job. Uh, coming in fourth, Team Finessen, Captain Doug Alexander, shooting 509 fish, winning $1,000. Yes. Fifth place, Team Stickin' and Stackin'. Wow. wow. I like that yeah. team Stickin name. Stickin' and Stackin'. Stickin' and Stackin'. Uh, Captain Zay Ridgel, Ridgel, shooting 406 fish, winning $500. Nice shooting, guys. Nice job. And that wraps up the uh, the numbers part of it. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the Big 20. Uh, coming in first place in the Big 20, Team On Track, Captain David Waddell, Weighing in 860.35 oh. pounds, winning $10,000. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Second place, Team Descalin, Captain Ryan Devine, weighing 819.54 pounds, wow. winning $8,000. Wow. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. weight right there. Coming in third. Team as- <laughs> Miss This. Okay, <laughs> yep. yep, yep. Captain Lance Reynolds, weighing in 468.65 pounds, winning $6,000. Fourth place, Team Southern Wake, Captain Peyton Travers. Weighing in 438.45 pounds, winning $3,000. Coming in fifth, Team Risky Adventures, Captain Justin Witte. Weighing in 386.4 pounds, winning $2,000. And sixth place, Team Killin' Slime, Captain Dustin Conley. Weighing in 335 pounds, winning $1,000. Nice job yeah, to nice all the guys. top placing teams at the Worlds this year. Yep. Uh, some great uh, payouts right there. My goodness, look at the, you know... You're, you're looking at coming in third place in, in Big yeah. 20, winning $6,000. Yeah, that's crazy. I, mean, I was thinking that same thing reading through here. Wow. wow. Even all the money to go in towards to have a numbers and a, a Big 20 category. Yes, that's right. impressive. That's a lot right. of money there. Very nice. Very nice. Um, like I said, uh, AMS staffers, uh, Team Montrek, Lance Brantley, David, David Waddell, Gunnar Hagen, and Noah Brewer. Uh, heaviest overall fish weighing 83.95 pounds with a big oh. head. Uh, Good Lord. They average 74 oh. pounds on their 10 big head. Oh. <laughs> because you were only allowed to weigh in 10 yeah. big heads. Yep. Yep. Uh, Lance did tell me, so they would have had over 1,000 pounds if they oh were allowed to weigh in 10 big heads. God. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming in second, AMS staffers, uh, Team Descalin, Ryan Devine, Travis Spiceland, Sawyer York, and Tyler Devine, their biggest big head weighed in at 81.59 pounds. And they also had a couple of albino big heads. That is crazy. In those pictures, that's nuts. Yeah. Two of them. Right. That's insane in one night. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, Lance Brantley's team shot had one albino big head in yeah. their pictures. Yeah. That's nuts. Wow. You know, wow. Matt, back in like the 80s and 90s, you had the Celtics and the Lakers. You yeah. know, that was like a huge rivalry. Mm-hmm. There's just two heavy hitters, star-studded oh, yeah. teams. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's kind of like what these two are. Right. I mean, it's just they just take turns winning <laughs> big-ass tournaments. Yep. It's just, it's really cool to see that. I mean, cool. the, the weights and the individual fish that they're bringing in are unheard of. Right. It's just right. crazy to see these weights. Yep. Uh, I did see some comments in their pictures, and somebody said, you know, these pictures do not do these fish justice. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just so big. Yep. You know, you're seeing a, a, a side angle. of it. It's hard to, to hold up a fish that size and make it that. look big. Yes. Yeah. You know, it really is. Yep. yep. Uh, I mean, I shot, you know, a couple, you know, I can't remember what the heck they were in their 80s or 70s and 60s and stuff. Yeah. And they're hold to hold up. Those oh, fish they're are, hard to they're hold. hard to hold. Yeah. Yeah. You know, thank goodness they got a big mouth that kind of lets you get in there. A little bit of a handle. plate and stuff, a handle and right. stuff. Right. I, I was thinking that same thing. You know, if, if you or I shoot a, a 30-pound common carp. Yeah. Okay. You can hold that fish, handle it however you want right. to get the picture perfect. Yes. You know, after 10 or 12 pictures, you might be getting a little bit like, yep. oh, all right, I got to set it down. How do you do that with an 80 right. pound fish? You can't. Right. Right. You can't just hold that fish like this. Right. You, you can't hold 80 pounds like that. So mm-hmm. it's tough to capture the true size of these fish. I'm kind of excited, Schmitty. Yeah. Oh, for. Because I'm going to go try to do my best to see if I can get me a yeah. big head over 80. Oh, my when God. When I head down there here shortly. Just, just to even have that as a possible goal is insane. Yeah. To say that. But maybe I can get a, a gold one. Oh, and my I'll buy gosh. One. Maybe. Schmitty. Schmitty, maybe I can get a gold one. Maybe the bullfishing gods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they took. 
the gold common carp away from they you. They did. And they are going to be replacing it, bestowing upon oh to you a gosh. big old golden albino blanket. Oh. oh, man. That would be nice. Yes. I just sure hope you don't miss <laughs> one and it's on camera because you will <laughs> never hear the end of it. <laughs> and maybe the bullfishing gods are, are going to be giving me that goldfish or that gold uh, big head, albino big head, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Yep. Because I lost my vicious vision. Oh, class, yes. You've got a lot of good karma that should be working I its do. way back to you. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 I'm actually leaving in a couple hours. Oh, you're leaving today? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jealous. That's cool. That's fun. <laughs> That's cool. I can't wait to get down there. I just, I just love that. Oh, it's just, just a special area. I just area. love this, this. You know, if I want to go out and chase grassies during the daytime, I go chase grass during the daytime. I want to go below the dams. I go below the dams and shoot silvers right. and maybe a big head. Right. Go to the Ohio River to shoot some big heads, you know. Yeah. I just love this time of year. That's always something down there that I've always thought whenever you and I have gone down there. You know, up here it's in Wisconsin, it's it's hard to shoot daytime fish when they're not in that somewhat spawning mentality. Yeah. You can't just go out and be like, oh, I'm going right. to shoot a sh- right. bunch of fish today. It's tough to do that. Yeah. Down there you can... You can shoot fish all day, depending on what you're trying to do, or at least you'll have a good chance to do so. Correct, yes. And you can go out at night. I mean, yep. there's just always different things to do, fish to target. Yep. It's a really you know, target-rich environment right. down right. there. And another thing that I like to do on these trips, Eric, is I like to try out different stuff. I'll, I'll shoot a certain one of our points for a, a long time to see oh, how sure. it's performing down yep. there yep. on some of their you know, uh, big heads or silvers. That we don't always get to shoot those right. points into. Absolutely. Uh, testing our gear down there yep. is, a, is a great opportunity for us as well. Uh, shooting our bows down there. Mm-hmm. Our, our, you know, I'll be taking some mega mouse down there as well and yeah. shooting that stuff. And uh, my TNTs and my Ringos. I just love this time of year. Oh, yeah. Going out there and just having a good old time on the water, shooting fish, and yeah. having a good time with good people. Meanwhile, I'll be back here with my broken computer. <laughs> Speaking of you to make staying, things work. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of you staying here, Schmitty, Uh-oh. I just found out last week that you were doing a big no-no in the Man. in the shop. Okay. Schmitty. Uh, this, is all, this is all voodoo. This is not real, what he's about Schmitty, to say. <laughs> you were doing a big no-no here at the shop. So in the shop, there's two bathrooms in the back. Where the machines are. Those are off limits to number twos. <laughs> okay. Just the bathrooms up front are allowed for number twos. It's very true. Yep. So um, the other day I, I go around and I says, anybody know where Schmitty is? Where's Schmitty? I don't know. I don't know. And it was at 12 o'clock lunch break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Half of us take lunch at 12 o'clock. Other half of us take lunch at 1230. Exactly. Well, me and Schmitty take lunch at 1230. I couldn't find Schmitty. Where is Schmitty at? I don't know where he's at. I went walking into the back room there, and all of a sudden, on the other side of the aisles, I see the bathroom door open up to the off-limit number two bathrooms, <laughs> and there goes Schmitty's on the other side of the aisles, like he's sneaking away while everybody's at lunch. There's nobody in the in the shop right now. Okay. Can I explain myself? It's uh, not what you think. Oh, I wasn't back there doing, doing number two. The thing is back there, with the way that those bathrooms <laughs> are situated, there's a Wi-Fi amplifier right above them. And if you would draw, there's three cell towers all around the shop. And if you would perfectly center where those cell towers are, it's right in those back bathrooms. So that's where I get the best cell coverage. I had to call somebody who was having an issue with a mega mouth reel. And that's where I go to take the phone call because I get nice, crisp, clear reception. So you go in the bathroom to take a, to do a phone call. <laughs> Yes, that's not weird. I wasn't doing number two. Back you have there. a you have a phone in your office. It was broke with the computer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> now we all know this is a bunch of bogus. So, if anything happens back there in those pipes in those area, you're going to be unplugging it because those are off limits to number the old bubbly gut. <laughs> <laughs> we should put a sign bag there. No bubble gut back here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yep, yep. okay well let's keep moving on here with some of the world's uh, stuff yeah here. the world's we've got some of the, the big fish here yeah um, yep. the heaviest silver shot down there team out for blood weighed in at 37.75 pounds winning four megamoth reels in an oneida bow holy cow yeah that's a if, hell of a win if i saw that heading into the tournament i would go scout for big a big silver yeah i'd be scouting for some big silver. holy silvers. cow that's I mean, that's a big, 37 pounds, that's a, that's that's a, a that's huge a tank silver. Too. Yeah, yep. I mean, that's almost three grand in winnings. Exactly. That's insane. Yeah. Holy yep. moly. Uh, the heaviest buff, Team Loggerheads, weighing in at 41.75 pounds, winning four Megamoth bow cases. Nice. Love those bow cases. And the uh, heaviest grass carp, Team Interlock, weighing yeah. 29 pounds, winning four Yeti coolers. Nice. Wow, that's very cool. 
Uh, the heaviest common carp, Team Midnight Riders, weighing in at 14.15 pounds, winning four Cajun reels. Nice, nice. Heaviest big head, Team On Track, weighing yep. in at 83.95 pounds, winning $2,000. Wow, wow. Uh, the heaviest guard, Team Missed This, weighing in at 25.55 pounds, winning four five-star LED bowl lights. Nice, nice. Um, youth female winner is from Team PL Outdoors. Winning an AMS Hooligan V2 bow. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. You know, it, it just blows my mind down there. You got all these giant fish. You got big grassies. You got big buffs. Mm-hmm. You got small mouth buffs, big mouth the buffs. The variety is insane. Big gar. Yep. You've got big, big heads, big silvers. Yep. But yet the heaviest common, 14 pounds. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, that, that growing season is so much longer down yeah. there if someone comes in here with a 14 pound common carp for the ams big 20 they're not they, weighing they're it. not weighing it no that fish is getting culled absolutely you know because they've got because they've got 10 30 pounders that are going to be yeah. weighed in along with a bunch of 20s yeah yeah this blew my mind and even when i go down there and i shoot some some commons down there they're not big commons they're yeah. smaller commons yeah i know uh, on instagram max wadlington from force feed them yeah um he refers to them as uncommons <laughs> because they're yeah. not that common right, down there. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm actually going to stop in and see Max at his oh, store nice. down there. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, and check out his store down there. And um, I'm going to check in with um, his store. is called Force Feed Them Bow Fishing. Yep. 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 And then I'm lo- really looking forward to, to stopping in and seeing Lance Brantley's new store Absolutely. down there, Muddy Flats. Muddy he Flats. bought that from them uh, yep. this past season. Yep. And excited to go down there and check out his new store and check it out. Yeah. Um, I'm going to probably have to buy a pair of polarized sunglasses that um, I see he's got some sunglasses there. So I'm probably going to oh, buy nice. some new ones down there. Nice. Crazy thing about Lance, too, is like, okay, he's he's doing all this scouting, doing all this stuff for these tournaments. He's winning tournaments. He's running a bow fishing store. This isn't even his busiest time of year. No. Because when he starts tracking with those dogs, with yep. his dog, yep. that's when he's – Getting three hours of sleep right, at night. I mean, right. that's it's just nuts. That dude's always running. Yep, he, he owns a pressure washer business oh, down that's there. Right. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Man, hats off to you, Lance. Right. Busy body. Right. But I just want to give a big shout out here, Schmitty, to uh, Justin Cook and his crew on on doing a great job uh, running the BA Worlds Tournament down there. They raised a lot of money. It was great. Uh, the only problem was that just too bad that the weather, you know, didn't cooperate and show a lot of bow fishermen what Kentucky area down there has for bow fishing wise. Um, they've had a lot of worlds there in the past. Uh, that's where I won my first world's tournament. Yep. Um, and my only worlds was down there in Kentucky. Yep. We weighed 804 pounds of <laughs> buffs, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's too bad that a lot of people didn't get to appreciate the true Kentucky area down there, the bow fishing wise. Um, he did mention me last night and said that things are getting a lot better down here. He says, uh, Jared Ashmer should be great. Good. Water's getting better down there. So I'm look, looking forward to it. But uh, great job to him and his crew yeah. for hosting a Worlds. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to seeing where the next world is going to be and and all the people that are putting in bids for that. So yeah. keep keep checking uh, the BA website for that as well. And I think I saw a post from the BA too, Matt. They have a new format for submitting a bid. Yes, it may, I guess it's pretty a lot more A, a more easy. streamlined yes. way to be able to fill right. out information, destination, yep. location, estimated area, and all that right. stuff. So be, if you're if you're looking to put a bid in, yep. uh, be on the lookout for that. That's right. very cool that they, they have mm-hmm. that. So, mm-hmm. uh, Let's get ready to rumble! Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Get ready for fish that you wish. This fish comes to us out of a state that does not have an NFL team, but their college team could definitely beat the Minnesota Vikings or the Chicago Bears. <laughs> I'm talking Roll Tide, baby, the beautiful state of Alabama. This fish was shot by Justin Aaron on September 17th, 2017, with a length of 42 inches. This freshwater drum weighs in at a hefty 39.65 pounds. And that is a fish you wish you shot. Holy cow. 42-inch freshwater drum. That's a tank. I like these just because I get to see these insane weights of these fish. Right. Good God. 40 pounds. That's insane. That is crazy. (laughs) That's cool. That's cool. Alabama. I like the little Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings little... uh, comment in there that does pretty well for a couple of wisconsin boys that's cool yeah. that's i see cool. a bunch of posts on some nfl 
little Oh yeah, on Facebook yep. and stuff like yep. that. There and they're saying, "Ah, oh, this year we're gonna get the Packers." I'm like, "Man, you've been saying which they, team? The Bears? Both Minnesota and the Bears always they always say that this year, this year, this year, yeah. this year, this yeah. year, this year. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. Caleb Williams, I'm telling you, they're saying he's a he's the next Patrick Mahomes. They've been saying that about they said that about Justin Fields too. Yeah. When they got him. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We're confident here. We're right. confident. Right. So. But uh, I think we're going to. Wow. A little blast to the eardrum. A little blast to the eardrum right there. <laughs> and that right there is going to wrap up our episode 83 of the Boat Fishing Buzz. And I'm telling you what. If you are down in that Kentucky area and you're looking for something to do this weekend, jump on down to the Jared Ashram or take some kids out. It's a blast. Absolutely. You'll have a good old time. Uh, keep following us on the AMS Facebook page. Hopefully, I'll be posting a bunch of pictures out there when yeah. I'm down there and yeah. some some fish yeah. that we're shooting down there, and the kids having a good old time. Maybe you'll get on a big old big head. Hopefully, oh, cross little, your fingers. Little albino big head, baby. <laughs> oh, chihuahua! <laughs> <laughs> but from all of us here at AMS Bow Fishing and Mega Mouth Bow Fishing as well, we wish you the best of luck. Remember. Aim low and think big. Thanks for listening, guys.